1. Read those nutrition labels to avoid trans fats. You've probably heard this advice over and over again because it's one of the easiest things you can do to help control your diet. Read nutrition labels. Aside from telling you about how to eat a heart-healthy diet, nutrition labels can also help you avoid one of the worst ingredients for your cholesterol levels, trans fats. Trans fats, also known as hydrogenated oils, or partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, are sneaky ingredients that may be good for food manufacturers, but they're not so good for you. Trans fats help make products last longer so they can ship and store easier. They're common in many processed foods, and they're also present in many baked goods that use margarine or shortening. Unfortunately, they also contribute to raising bad LDL cholesterol levels, while reducing good HDL cholesterol levels. So if you really want to lower your cholesterol, read labels and try to avoid trans fats whenever you can. They're some of the biggest offenders when it comes to high cholesterol, and cutting them out of your diet can be a great move. 2. Choose meats with fewer saturated fats like fish or chicken. Pantry running low. Refrigerator looking a bit emptier than usual. Before you head out to the supermarket to restock, take a moment to review your shopping list and see if there's a chance to make some easy protein switches. For starters, go easy on red meats. Many red meats are high in saturated fats, which can raise bad LDL cholesterol levels. For healthier alternatives, choose skinless chicken or skinless turkey more often, and avoid processed meats. You can also try working more fish into your diet. Fish are low in saturated fats and many also contain omega-3 fatty acids, which benefit your heart health and can boost your good HDL cholesterol levels. Here are some examples of the kinds of fish you can eat on a weekly or monthly basis. Oily fish like Atlantic or Pacific caught salmon. Atlantic mackerel or tilapia can be eaten two times per week. Shellfish like shrimp and crab, and cod can also be eaten that often. Lake herring, that good old Minnesota staple, halibut or canned light tuna can be eaten once a week. Trout, a beloved Minnesota and Wisconsin lake fish, grouper or tuna steaks or fillets can be eaten once per month. All that said, steak and hamburger can be hard to resist. When you're grilling out, Choose leaner cuts of meat. Like anything, it's okay to have some saturated fats in your diet. You just need to eat them in moderation. 3. Get more soluble fiber with whole grain bread, kidney beans, quinoa and more. You probably know fiber as something that can help you with your digestive health. This is true, but if you thought fiber was only for digestion, think again, it can also help build your cardiovascular health. A low cholesterol food list is rich in soluble fiber. Soluble fiber grabs cholesterol in your gut before it gets into your bloodstream and helps lower bad LDL cholesterol levels. Foods rich in soluble fiber include oats, barley, quinoa, whole grain bread, kidney beans, lentils, chickpeas. Build more of these types of foods into your diet. Try oatmeal and whole grain toast for breakfast curried lentils for lunch, or turkey chili with kidney beans for dinner. But one thing that's important to remember here is that not all good foods are created equal. Generally, the more processed a grain or bean, the less likely it is to have healthy benefits and nutritional value. Whenever you can, try to stock up on fresh ingredients. 4. To boost unsaturated fats and fiber, snack on avocados, strawberries, peas or walnuts. There's nothing wrong with grabbing a snack between meals to boost your energy or settle the rumbling in your stomach that your coworker just overheard. But common snack foods like chips, microwavable popcorn, cookies, pastries or crackers are high in trans and saturated fats. On the other hand, snacking on fruits, vegetables and nuts not only can help you avoid bad fats, but also get good fats and fiber. Raw nuts are high in unsaturated fats, which are the best kind of fats. They raise your good HDL cholesterol levels and lower your bad LDL cholesterol levels. Other examples of foods high in unsaturated fat include avocados and olives. Nuts, along with many fruits and veggies, can also be great sources of soluble fiber. 
Adding as many of these foods as you can to your diet can be a double dose of cholesterol reducing impact. Not sure where to start? Here are some suggestions. Avocados, apples, strawberries, blueberries, oranges, grapes, olives, peas, broccoli, carrots, okra, eggplant, walnuts, peanuts, almonds, cashews, pistachios as with meats and whole grains, remember that more processing means less benefit. For example, you won't get as much value from applesauce as you will from eating a whole apple. So, if you're able to, try to get raw fruits, veggies and nuts, unsalted if you can. 5. Embrace low-fat milk, cheese and yogurts. Choosing to lower your cholesterol doesn't mean you have to give up everything you enjoy, it's simply about making smarter choices. When it comes to dairy, this is a big area where picking a healthier alternative can be an easy win. For items like cheese, milk, cream and yogurt, use low-fat dairy products instead of the regular versions. If you're feeling experimental, try soy milk, too. Who knows? It could become your next craving. Making these changes is helpful because full-fat dairy products contain saturated fat as well as cholesterol. By picking a low-fat, or non-fat, version, you're building healthier levels of cholesterol in your bloodstream. 6. Prepare your food a little differently. It's not only what you eat, it's how you eat it. Just as you can change what you buy in the grocery store, you can also choose healthier ways to make your food that help lower your cholesterol naturally. For example, trim fat and remove the skin, either before cooking or before eating, when cooking meat or fish. This helps you get the protein while reducing fat intake. Focus on boiling, broiling, baking, poaching or grilling. These are better methods of preparation than deep frying or breading, which can bring in extra fat. 7. Substitute healthy oils in place of butter and margarine. Of course, it's not always realistic to avoid fats when you're whipping up a tasty meal. When you do need to add fat for cooking, baking or pan frying, use healthy oils instead of solid fats like butter, margarine, shortening and lard. Solid fats are high in saturated fats, but oils are high in unsaturated fats, which, remember, are better for you. The American Heart Association AHA, recommends using oils that have less than 4 grams of saturated fat per tablespoon, and no trans fats. Many times, it's easy to swap a solid fat to a healthier one. Try using olive oil, sunflower oil or grapeseed oil in place of a solid fat. For example, if you'd rather use olive oil than butter, substitute 3 quarters the amount of butter in a recipe with olive oil. You might also bring out some new, surprising, subtle flavors, too. 8. Try having one vegetarian meal every week. Don't let the word, vegetarian, scare you. By choosing a smartly prepared vegetarian meal, you're hitting multiple cholesterol-lowering goals at the same time, like eating healthier fats and getting more soluble fiber. Plus, many vegetarian meals are just as flavorful and filling as their meaty cousins. Here's one idea for a low cholesterol recipe. Try a freshly prepared salad with a sesame vinaigrette and some grilled, spiced tofu. For dessert, add some fresh blueberries, strawberries and oats to low-fat vanilla yogurt. The key here is to build up a routine, like making every Tuesday night vegetarian night. Once that becomes the norm, try expanding to different nights, or add a weekly vegetarian lunch, too. You can also be flexitarian by just eating smaller portions of meat. Over time, these modifications can really add up and pay off. 9. Work in some more movement to your daily tasks. By keeping your body moving, you're helping it do what it was meant to do, which can result in all-around health-enhancing perks. This includes raising good HDL cholesterol, managing blood pressure levels and many other heart-healthy benefits. Do you need to start running every day? Do you need to join a gym or buy a bunch of home fitness equipment? If you want to, go ahead. But there are many other choices, and finding a routine that works for you is what's most important. Ideally, you want to aim for at least 2.5 hours, 150 minutes, of moderate physical activity every week. 
You can break that up however you like. You might focus on doing something every day, or you could dedicate yourself to just a few days per week. The key is to just get started. For example, do you usually take the elevator? Take the stairs instead. Do you walk your dog every day? Go a little farther than usual, or walk at a faster pace. Need to go shopping. Park farther away than you normally do. Catching up on your favorite TV series. Try stretching, dumbbells or kettlebells while you're watching rather than just sitting on the couch. Also look for chances to bring motion into your daily life, such as walking while you talk on the phone. If you're feeling good, work up to more intense physical activity, like lap swimming, jogging or hot yoga. Don't overexert yourself. But remember that regular and consistent exercise has benefits beyond managing your cholesterol. It also helps reduce blood pressure and builds your overall physical, mental and emotional well-being. Even if you just go a little farther or a little faster than you usually do, that extra activity will be a big step in the right direction for your health. 10. Work with your doctor on a lower cholesterol plan, especially if you're overweight or you smoke. Lowering your cholesterol doesn't mean going it alone. Your primary care doctor is a helpful partner along your journey. Your doctor can work with you to create an action plan just for you, one that combines diet, exercise and other lifestyle changes to help you lower and manage your cholesterol. For example, losing weight and quitting smoking can be big helpers for lowering cholesterol. Quitting smoking can raise your good HDL cholesterol levels, and losing weight can lower your bad LDL cholesterol levels significantly. But these two tasks aren't easy. Fortunately, your primary care doctor can be a great resource to help you get started and find practical ways to stick with it. Plus, help with quitting smoking and losing weight may already be covered if you have health insurance. Whether you want to quit smoking, lose weight or just learn more about how your personal health would benefit from lower cholesterol levels, regular check-ins with your doctor are key. They can also perform cholesterol tests, the only way to actually measure cholesterol, to check your progress and help you make adjustments based on the results.